Hi guys, in this video I've collected pretty comprehensive list of all sorts of different cameras that can shoot videos at resolutions 4K or higher at 50-60 or more frames per second. I've divided them into several different categories depending on form factor or purpose, price and few other parameters. Few disclaimers you need to be aware of. First, I didn't include cameras that can capture 4K 60 via some external recorder. This video will strictly concentrate on cameras that can shoot 4K 60 internally. Second, I'm only including cameras that are already on the market. The one you can buy right now either new or used. Third, I might have missed some cameras. I've already spent more than 30 hours researching and putting together all this info, so please don't judge me too much. Instead, if you know about some camera that I've missed, let me and others know in the comment section below. I'm sure everyone would highly appreciate it. Before we start, let me just explain those few other parameters, because I think they might be somewhat important for people who will be searching for 4K60 cameras. One parameter I'm gonna mention is if the camera has interchangeable lens, because for some people and for certain applications it will be important. Another one, does the camera have some sort of stabilization, because once again for particular styles of filming, like travel films, vlogs, etc., image stabilization will come pretty handy. Third and fourth parameters will come sort of combined. I will mention if the camera has any kind of recording limit, splitting limit or clip size limitations in 4K60. It's one area that very very few reviewers actually talk about, but it's a big point of at least my personal frustration and other people's as well if you take a look at different companies' forum messages actually. What I mean by splitting or other file limitations is following. Despite camera manufacturers advertising that you can record, say, two hours on one battery, what they very often obfuscate is that if you are gonna record one long take, in the end, on your memory card, you will not get one big long video file. Instead, almost all cameras will divide your clips either because of file system limitations, which in 2019 has absolutely no reason to be there, but that's a topic for another video, or because of some sort of time limitations. Most of the cameras, when splitting clips, will not drop any frames and will continue to record your video into the next file. Later, when editing your videos, you will be able just to stack your clips side by side and they all should play without any problems. However, I say should, because it's not always the case. Some cameras, judging by forum posts, drop frames when splitting files, and some might completely stop recording after hitting those limits. Not to mention giant inconvenience factor, because again, not many people are even aware of this issue and they are quite surprised when they buy a new camera and realize that now their hassle just to make simple videos multiplied. So in my book, any sort of limitations on recorded file is a negative thing that you should investigate more thoroughly before buying a particular camera. Some cameras will have pretty loose limitations, like splitting file after 3 hours of recording or something similar. And that in my mind is at least somewhat reasonable compromise. In each category I will try to go from the least expensive cameras to the most expensive ones and I will be using prices for USA market just because it was easier to find them. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. Our first category is action camera slash small vlogging camera. All these cameras share few similarities. Obviously they don't have interchangeable lenses, but they all have some kind of image stabilization. Both Yi 4K Plus action camera at $200 and GoPro Hero 6 Black at around $270 feature electronic image stabilization only at 4K 30. At the same time, GoPro Hero 7 Black at around $370 and DJI Osmo Action at $350 have EIS at 4K 60. DJI Osmo Pocket, which would cost you about the same $350, also has stabilization at 4K 60, but this time it's free access gimbal. As far as I could tell, they all share the same limitations of 4GB clip size limit, but no recording time limit. Again, I just want to make it clear, I haven't personally tested all these recording clip limits, so I go by all the available information I could gather online. I tried my best to research it all, but the information is pretty scarce on this topic. Next category is camcorders. Again, there are a few similarities. None of the camcorders have interchangeable lenses, and they all feature some sort of optical image stabilization, not electronic one. In the case of Canon Vixia GX10 and Canon XF400-405, 
It is 5-axis OIS. They come at around 2K and 2.5K mark respectively. And both of them have similar recording limits. 6 hours per clip, but they will split the files at 4GB mark. Next are camcorders from Panasonic. Models HCX1000 and HCX1 both have free access optical image stabilization at 4K and 5 axis with the help of electronic image stabilization at 1080p resolution. Apparently, they both have hard time limits at 10 hour mark, but they also have time limits at either 30 or 120 minutes for X1000 or 30 and 180 minutes for X1. And they will also split your files at either 4 GB or at 48 or 96 GB for each model respectively, depending on settings and card you're gonna use. Another camcorder is AG DVX200 at 3.5K that features similar free access OIS and big 4 camcorders micro third sensor. However, I was unable to obtain information on time or size limits on this model due to poor documentation, so I could only assume it will be similar to the other Panasonic models. Last one is Sony PXWZ280, with a mouthful name, which comes at an astonishing price of $7,000 and uh, features some sort of optical image stabilization. I wasn't able to confirm which exact one, but I'm assuming it's free access. It will stop your clip at 24 hours, and it seems like it doesn't have clip size limit, but I'm not really sure, because I have to add the documentation on the most expensive camcorder was kinda the worst. Next we have DSLR slash mirrorless style cameras. All the cameras in this category have interchangeable lenses, but we're gonna split it into two subcategories, and we're gonna see some trend there. First one, the cameras with in-body image stabilization, or IBIS. And here we have a trio of Panasonic cameras. At $1500, still an amazing all-around camera, Panasonic GH5. At around $2500, Panasonic S1. And at around $3700, Panasonic S1R. They will all have recording time and or clip size limits. GH5 at around 3 hours and 4 or 96 GB. S1 at 30 minutes or 3 hours and the same 4 or 96 GB. And S1R at 15 minutes and either 4 GB or no limits if using correct media cards. Check the manual. Second subcategory, as you might have guessed, cameras without IBIS. And at just $1300, we have our first true cinema camera. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which is a bargain deal if you realize what you get. No recording time limits and no clip size limits, not to mention RAW. This is the best cinema camera for the price, period. Next we have Fujifilm X-T3 at $1400 and Panasonic GH5S at $2200. They both have clip size limits at either 4 or 96 GB, but time limit on Fuji is 20 minutes, while on Panasonic it's around 3 hours. And last at $5500 is Canon's EOS 1DX Mark II. It will have time limits of 30 minutes for 4K or 8 minutes for high frame rate shoots and will have either no clip size limit or will split files at 4GB. Again, see the manual to choose correctly. Ok, so from here, all the featured cameras will share this in common. They all will have interchangeable lenses, none of them will have image stabilization, and most of them won't have any recording time limits or clip size limits. There will be few notable exceptions, but I'm gonna specifically mention them. And while we're here, please guys, subscribe to the channel, click that bell, and share this video around, it will greatly help me to grow the channel. Thank you very much. So the next category is small cinema camera. And here I'm gonna feature again the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, just because it really is the best small cinema camera for the money. Another camera in this category is Zcam E2 4K Micro Four Thirds camera. This one will have time splitting limits and you will be able to decide which one you want between 5, 10, 20 or 30 minutes and no clip size limit, as far as I could find anyway. One notable thing about this camera specifically, at this price point, it's the only one that can shoot 4K at 120 or even 4K at 160, in ProRes formats no less, so it's a great option. 
Another category on our list is mid-range cinema camera. And we're first gonna feature Blackmagic Ursa cameras. At $3,000 Ursa Mini 4K, at around $4,500 Ursa Mini 4.6K, and at around roughly $5,000 Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. There is one more camera at roughly 3.5K, it is Ursa Broadcast with B4 lens mount, but it's a very specific camera for very specific lenses and needs, such as broadcast, as the name implies, so it's not really included in our comparison, although this camera does exist. Then we have another trio, this time from Kinefinity. Terra 4K comes conveniently at around 4K mark. Mavo will cost you around 8K, and Mavo full frame is around $12,000. No limits on any of these cameras, but I should know that Kinefinity will format SSDs into either HFS or NTFS file system. And the problem with that is that they kinda mutually exclusive since one is for macOS and another for Windows. I think it's done because both file systems have journaling which could help to prevent data loss, but still I thought I'll just mention this. Then we have duo of Sony's, Sony FS7 at $7,000 and Sony FS7 Mark II at around $9,000. Another mid-range cinema camera is Panasonic EVA 1, and it seems like this camera has recording time limit of either 5 or 10 hours. As to the clip size limit, it's either non-present or it's old for gigabyte story. Last camera at around $7,500 is Canon EOS C200. From what I could understand, there is 4 gigabyte limit but only for proxy files, not for RAW. And now we're gonna go to the next category. Full-blown cinema cameras. Here we will have first of all all sorts of red cameras, starting anywhere from 10k and going all the way up to $55,000. And they all share the same stupid crap, in my opinion anyway. Although there is no time limit, they all have clip size limit. 4GB for RAW are 3D files, and there is no escape from it as far as I could tell. After some firmware update you could record proxies using UDF file system without any cuts, but you're still stuck with 4GB limits for raw files. I don't know, unbelievable actually. Next camera is Sony Venice Full Frame 6K at around $40,000, which has the time limits of 6 hours per clip or 24 hours total but doesn't have clip size limit. Ari Alexa LF comes at $90,000 and has 229GB hard cut clip size limit. And the last camera on this list is Panavision Millennium DXL2. The camera is literally priceless since you can't buy it, but you can rent it for only about $1,000 per day. And since it uses RED's Monstro sensor, it comes with all the other RED's benefits, that is, 4GB limit for all files. The last category that may be interesting for people is drones. Common things first. All the drones have free access gimbals. From the info I could find, all have 4GB clip size limits. All but three do not feature interchangeable lenses, and most have 5 minutes per clip limitation. Although I have to mention that it's really hard to get this information on drones since their manuals usually lack many crucial details like this. That being said, at 1K mark comes Hotel Evo. Next are 5 drones from DJI with fixed lenses. At $1200 is Phantom 4 Advanced. From 1350 to 1500 come Phantom 4 Pro, Pro Plus, Pro V2 and Inspire 2. X4S comes at $3,000 mark. Next, three DJI drones all have interchangeable lenses. From 10 to 13K come Inspire 2 X5S Professional or Premium, and at 20K comes Inspire 2 Cinema Premium X7. All the Inspire lineup feature time limit of 9 minutes per clip. Last two drones are from the company with a tough name. I'm gonna pronounce it as unique. These are Typhoon H Plus with C23 camera and Unique H520 with E90 camera. 
And that will conclude our list of cameras that can shoot 4K60 or higher. Once again, if I miss some camera, please let us know in the comment section below, because this information is actually not that easy to find. Thank you for watching, I hope it was useful. If it was, please share this video around. And also, please subscribe to the channel, I would highly appreciate it. Because by this time, I will have spent already more than 40 hours working on this video, and I kinda started to hate it already. Anyway, um, thanks once again, till the next one. Take care.